And then like two weeks later, she's like, I'm coming to San Diego. I was like, what? And she just like within like three days, just like drove straight like from Philly to San Diego. I was like, only lesbians. Y'all take TikTok lesbians to a whole new level. All right, guys, welcome to Queer Talk number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators and space we share our stories on all things queer related. And hey, if you're new listening to this, hit that subscribe button on Apple Podcasts and give, and give us a follow on Spotify. Our guest today is a world finalist, professional runner and Olympic hopeful. You can find her on TikTok at Nikki underscore Hiltz. Please welcome Nikki Hiltz. Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. When I first saw you, I thought it said Nikki Hits, and I was like, that makes total sense. She's a runner, Nikki Hits. Like, it sounded just like the perfect brand name for a runner. <laughs> yeah, it's like Nikki Slaps. <laughs> yeah, it's like Nikki Hits. She really hits, you know? <laughs> she hits the pavement. She runs. No, it's Hiltz. I think it's German. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. I get that. Um, but no, you were one of the first people, I say this, I feel like to all the people that I have on here, but like, you were like one of the OG people that I had followed when I first got on TikTok. And I think just because you were an athlete and I had previously been an athlete just on a lower, lower scale. Um, but I saw your shit and I was like, dude, this is hilarious. Like I had no idea, like, prof like people who were like verified professional people, like outside of like social media world like got on this stuff and so when I saw your page I was like what and no professional runners were funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> wait when did you get TikTok I got it like April or okay, something that's like right when I got it too yeah I, yep. I remember following you right away too I was like okay just because I was like okay what do you do I was like oh I'll follow like other queer creators I was yeah. like oh she's funny <laughs> what do you do what do you do nothing at that point I didn't have anything <laughs> I was just a regular person I'm still a regular person I just have a podcast <laughs> nice <laughs> oh but no that's funny I was gonna oh yeah you're a millennial because I saw you're 25 I just turned 26 I think all the millennials got on during that time we all were like yeah. oh this is cool now this isn't just for 10 year olds Yes. Yeah. I think that was April was when the millennials were allowed to join. Yep. Yep. <laughs> we were allowed to join and not feel weird about it. Yeah, exactly. It was all the millennials that were putting like 21 plus and like, if you're 21, like, you know, and being like, Ooh, they're not 21. They're 16. I'm going to scroll on past that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love the ones where it's like, put your age in your bio, please. <laughs> Seriously, I did have my age in my bio for the longest time, but I really, people didn't believe me because I don't look like I'm 26. They were like, nah, you're like 18. I was like, oh, motherfucker, I can't win. <laughs> you're gonna think I'm young forever. It's fine. I had seen you for a while and it was really interesting because you're so open about your sexuality, which I love just because you have. A platform you know like I believe if you have a platform use it for good and you you really do like all of your content is so great like the stuff that you post on Instagram like you post like thoroughly like vulnerable posts where people can connect with you like I I absolutely love it I think that's the best thing and like how how has coming out been for you like being a professional athlete like when did you come out what was that process like for you so I feel like for me, it is so important to be like very vocal and visible. Like you said, like if you have a platform, use it. And I think for me, it's because like when I was growing up, I didn't really have that representation in sports. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm like, OK, well, I want to be that for someone else. So like for, you know, any queer kid watching being like, oh, if like Nikki can do it, I can do it. And, you know, it's been really like empowering and inspiring. And I feel like I just from the people that have reached out to me I'm just it, it just makes me want to keep going and mm -hmm. um yeah I mean I came out so I went to school my first two years I went to the University of Oregon and then I ended up transferring for my last three years to the University of Arkansas um I ran track and I think I I kind of came out started coming out in Oregon I told like a few close friends and teammates um and then I transferred to Arkansas and I feel like I kind of went like back in the closet I was like I don't know where everyone's at with this here like I'm just yeah. gonna, I'm just gonna play it safe and do what I do best and stay in the closet and then, <laughs> uh, I eventually just I I got a girlfriend so it was like very obvious and um she was actually on the team with me and we just kind of started you know I mean like yeah we're like we're together and like that means that we're gay and 
you know, I, I feel like I had some very interesting conversations I had, um, you know, cause we're in the South, like you're in Arkansas, like you're in it, you know, you went to school in Kentucky and, yeah. um, I feel like I definitely had some uncomfortable conversations with teammates. Um, I had one of my teammates, she was very raised Christian Baptist, told, tell me that I was going to go to hell. And I was oh, like, God. oh, let's unpack that. So, <laughs> let's, yeah. let's unpack that. Yeah. This hell you speak of. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I don't know. It was any, I was like, let's get coffee and talk. And like, honestly, it was like, I feel like we left the quote unquote meeting we had like better friends because of it. Because like, I don't know. And I feel like I wouldn't have gotten that experience had I gone to just like stayed at Oregon, stayed at a very like liberal college bubble and so I kind of came out to my team and then I think eventually I did a post on Instagram and kind of came out to the world and um you know uh since then I've kind of been like labeled as like the gay runner which is like (laughs) kind of kind of like a label I've embraced I'm like yeah I'm gay and I'm a runner like those are two things I'm really proud of (laughs) and um so yeah it's kind of like last year I started running like really well and I ended up making the world team and made the world final and it was in Doha Qatar was where the world championships were held and in Do- in Qatar I don't know how to say that country Qatar Qatar, Qatar? I, I always thought it was Qatar K- I yeah. don't know I know yeah, okay. I thought it was Qatar too and everyone yeah. kept saying Qatar I'm like what Qatar? what <laughs> I've know. never heard of that. Maybe we're just in the dark. <laughs> anyway, you know, it's in the Middle East and it's actually like against the law to be, you know, to be a homosexual. So that was kind wow. of interesting to have, you know, my first world championship, my first U.S. team world appearance be in a place where it's like illegal to be myself. Um, but it was fine. I was in a hotel the whole time where like with a bunch of all my U.S. teammates, and um, I think, honestly, the media wanted wanted there to be a story, like, yeah. it was, <laughs> I remember talking to my friend about it, and they were like, you know, you should get arrested or something, that'd be really good for your brand, I was like, um, <laughs> but, um, no, it was totally fine, but I feel like it was, like, since I'm, like, this gay runner, like, it's so interesting, because after a race, I'll be in the mix zone, you know, with all these, like, interviewers or whatever, and and it, all these other people, like, the only questions they have to really, like, prepare for are, like, how was the race? How did you feel? Like, you know, and for me, it's, like, I crossed the line. I finally, I made the world final, and I think the first question was, like, what's it like to be gay here where it's illegal to be gay? I was, like, okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like thank you so much. Um, <laughs> thank you for your questions. I appreciate your curiosity. <laughs> So it's been quite the journey, but you know, I've, I think runners are very like nerdy, interesting people. And I've kind of tried to bring like my two communities together and it, mm-hmm. it's just been like, fun. And um, I guess I identify really with like being a runner and then also being gay. So it, it's a fun yeah. time. <laughs> I think it's nice that you merge those too. I honestly can see the headlines now. Like, can't, can't you see like some like <laughs> ignorant white people being like, <laughs> Gay runner gets arrested <laughs> for scissoring. <laughs> you know, did it? People like it How was much like wrong shit in there. <laughs> that would be a lot. I don't think <laughs> the car could handle that. <laughs> there was like, I think it was like even like holding hands or kissing, like any public display of affection was like I immediately no. Like, so scissoring would have been quite the that <laughs> that, that, the- that would have been immediate like life without pearl yeah <laughs> you know your friends would have been like we just wanted you to, to, to get arrested and then just like you know bit post bail and get out the same day no right. <laughs> went in too deep it was too deep <laughs> too far <laughs> that's so funny i wish i had friends that were like i hope you get arrested yeah. <laughs> like fucking get arrested <laughs> i love that journey for you yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um but I feel like that they are, they're always looking for a story. It's not even just like, oh, I've worked really hard and like my times have been this and I've gone through these trials and tribulations of like, nor- like didn't, I wouldn't say normal obstacles, being gay is a normal thing and it is an obstacle that's normal. But like what would people would be, what heterosexual people would consider typical of like battling whatever, whatever, you know, and then getting there. It's like not enough to yeah. like have that. You know? Yeah. And even like I've done podcasts before and 
it's like people always want okay like what's the hardest thing you've been through I'm like okay like <laughs> they just want to like get right through it and like what's the tea and how so deep do you want how deep do you want that answer to be because like there's levels to that like I could talk oh, about yeah. shit that I'm cool with now but was once not okay with so I mean it it yeah. is kind of it was hard but like I'm not gonna tell you the shit that's like I'm ashamed of <laughs> right like have you heard about internalized homophobia <laughs> yeah <laughs> that shit runs deep I'll tell you some of the surface shit <laughs> oh gosh yeah but it's but. I love I think it's I feel like it's refreshing to be on a podcast where it's like it's not a runner trying to like know about my like sexuality or like my experience with being queer it's 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 like the opposite I feel like you're a queer person that's like oh what's like being a runner you know <laughs> yeah I don't know what it's like to be a professional athlete in general yeah. let alone a runner I mean Jesus I mean I was like a middle school sprinter I made it state once nice that was yeah, fucking that was fun. Good. that's a hard that's a really good track and field state like is Ohio yeah it's a hard hard state meet to meet, make yeah, it, it was nuts. I did AAU track too. I, I honestly, for, I literally came on here and I had forgotten that I ran three, I did like three or five years in track and I like did it professionally and I like went to like the junior Olympics or whatever. Oh. I, this is all coming back to me now. Apparently I didn't give a shit about it. <laughs> were you fast? What were your times? I was. Oh God, I don't remember my times. I started in like the fourth or fifth grade, like doing running track and I would go into the city. I grew up like in a country, like small town. And so I would go into the city to run track. I haven't talked about this in so long. I was one of two um, white people on the entire, in the entire squad, like the whole yeah. organization, like not just like my team or my age. So that was really interesting just wow. because I had, hadn't really seen a lot of diversity in general from where I grew up. Like I was pretty hick in country. So yeah. I was like, I felt I, I was a minority in that, in that little bubble of that time period and it 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 was uncomfortable which was good i think yeah, yeah, definitely. It needed to be uncomfortable but uh <laughs> it was it was really interesting and running was really interesting like i i remember you know when you think that you're the fastest person like i don't know if you did this like maybe in junior high or high school but you were like the cream of the crop and then you like get yeah. there where like people are beating your ass and you're like oh shit yeah <laughs> but, that was me probably high school to college I was like, you know, I was pretty good in high school. Like I won the California state meet and then I was re getting recruited by all these schools. I went to Oregon and I was like, okay, like I know what this is about. And I just got like, my ass kicked. I was like, okay, like yep. <laughs> this is a like the same sport at a different level is a different sport. Yeah, it really is. Like, yeah. And it, it is funny when you think that you are because you have people that tell you like, oh my God, you're amazing, all this, like you're breaking records at your school and like, and then you go and you get more and more and more and then you're like, oh fuck, like this is the next level. Oh my yeah. God. Like I, I was always like the last leg of like the four by one and then when I got into those like bigger areas with those people, like I was like, I think I was second or third leg. So I wasn't the fastest because I wasn't the first leg and I wasn't the fourth you leg. Yeah. I was fucking, I made it, but I was like third leg. So like I was, I was, <laughs> I was not, I was like, oh, this sucks. But no, that's funny. I feel like it's that, what's that saying where it's like, you're a, a big fish in a small pond. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're a big fish in a big pond with a bunch of other like big fish. Yeah. And, and I think it's all relative. I mean, like, I remember when I was in high school and I was like, you know, I had signed on to play division one soccer and like, it was a big deal. I was like the first one in my school to do it for that sport. Um, and it was like a big deal. And like, people were making it such a big deal. And I didn't think it was that big of a deal because all the people that I knew were also doing it. Like the people that I played club with and that I had grown up and played with for years. And like, people were going to big D one schools, you know, like, like a small flex. I, I played and trained with a girl who's on the U S women's national team. Like it, that, yeah. that shit was like Mecca. Yeah. I was like, Dude, I'm small potatoes, man. Like yeah. compared to that, but it's, it's nice to hear. It's nice to hear, but I'm like, I know that I'm not anything, Yeah. but yeah, it is funny when it's like, and then even like freshman year, I remember like playing for the first time in like the speed and pace. I mean, I'm sure you, you can attest to like in running, like, you probably have certain paces that you do. I don't really know much about 
uphill running. I was a sprinter. Whatever you guys do, I'm sure that it's such an adjustment when you get to that next level and you're like, oh my God, the speed and the pace of this run. Like for me, like the game was just, people were better, stronger, faster, and just everything moved quicker. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I feel like it was the jump from high school to college was mm -hmm. honestly bigger than the jump from college to professional because and the difference between college to professional was like okay I'm you know when you're a student athlete you go to school and then you go to practice and then you like crash um and it's like I feel like it was honestly easy it's easier to be a professional runner than a student athlete because it's like I don't have school like the only thing I have to do is like go for a run and like recover and then go for another run you know like yeah. it's it's so but that can be harder too because I'm like I think my first year at 2018 when I turned pro I was like oh my god I have so much free time like or it was like I eat sleep breathing running like I hate this like I need to be balanced and so it kind of yeah. took me a year to like find that balance um but it is like you have more time so you can put more energy and effort like into your runs and into your lifts and things like that. So, um, yeah, but it, like high school to college to pro are all very different. <laughs> That's so interesting. I was going to ask you about like that type of routine um, because I had a rower on and like she had talked to a little bit about it, but she like makes videos about like hers, like the, what her day looks like. And she like right. has like a morning thing. And then she like has like an afternoon workout and then like another, like they're just different, different types yeah. of things, like similar to like maybe two a days or something. Like when you do yeah. two and three a days, if you guys did that in college, I did, I feel like it was, it might be like on the same realm of that. Like you do cardio and then you do like where you work out like you know strength training and mm -hmm. and all that you got it that's it <laughs> that's, that's it that's see that if I if I liked a sport enough I didn't think I liked soccer enough I only played the first yeah. two years and then I blew my knee out but like th I think that would be the dream I mean right. right so I feel like it's hard because I I I do like running but I think my favorite part of this sport like is competing like Mm -hmm. I feel like I just like like attention like you know like, it's TikTok it like you just like attention I'm like oh I like getting these likes or I like <laughs> you yeah. get these followers and so or it's like I feel like I like being an entertainer if that makes sense mm -hmm. so my favorite part of the sport is like racing and like being in a big arena and like all eyes are on like yeah my race like the race that's unfolding in front of me and so that's been like really hard with quarantine because like we haven't or you know with COVID because the there hasn't been any races and the Olympics got postponed. And so it is very like mundane, just like day in, day out, like training. And I'm like, okay, where's the fun stuff? Like, you know, where's the big arena? Where's like, yeah. But, um, you know, just like holding on to the fact that like that is going to come back one day and you just have to like ride this out, be patient and, you know, wear masks and social distance. And um, just kind of trust the organizing bodies that they'll make the best decisions. And I feel like, yeah, but I, it, it is like, it, I think you just like have a routine. You get like, it's almost like habit. Um, like I, I wait like today, I just like woke up and ran like seven miles and then now I'm here and then I'm going to run like three miles in the evening. Like Same. it's just kind of this yeah. going through the motions, but yeah. So I feel like a normal week I run like 70 miles a week. So I average about 10 miles a day. Some days are like 13 miles. Some days are like four miles. Like it just, at the end of the week though, I hit 70. And then Tuesdays and Fridays are like my really hard days. And on those days I'll lift, I'll go to the gym and like strength train. So it is very like, you know, like it's, it's like a schedule and it's very routine and um, definitely can be mundane at times, but um, kind of all worth it in the end when like, you know, you're at on those big stages and like you get to show off and entertain. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I feel like it'd be hard since like, you know, everyone has like a goal in mind. So if you're just like training for like a supposed, like maybe this will happen or like, you know, the Olympics will be coming up in the next year and stuff like that. But it's so up in the air, like what if shit goes wrong and like stuff like that. So I feel like it'd be hard to be disciplined to like practice and do these things when you don't have like the immediate reward of that competitive yes. event. Like that's what I fucking hate working out. I don't know what it is about college sports. I like after I was forced to like run and do shit that I like didn't want to do after <laughs> I quit, I was like, I'm not doing anything. I'm not running at all. I'm walking on an incline. That's all I'm doing. 
Like, <laughs> I, and I've been out for years now and I still am like that. I'm like, fuck that shit. And I'll like try and do it for like a couple weeks. Cause I, I like like weightlifting, like the weightlifting part. Yep. I hate running. I hate running so much. I don't know how I played soccer. <laughs> I think you're just like, you're, it, your mind, you don't realize how much you're running. You know, like they say you run like 10 miles in a game. And like, I don't know how the hell that happens because I could never, I could barely run three miles. No way do you run 10 miles during a game. (laughs) Swear to God, look it up. Look it up. Midfielders run 10 miles. miles. 10 10 miles? In a 90 minute, 90 minute game. That's consecutive. Midfield, like, if you're goalie, you're not running (laughs) anyway. No, I'm not goalie. Look at me, I'm 5'4". You think I'm going to be goalie? Wait, so what position were you? So I played left outside mid and I also played left defense. So that makes sense um, why you're running 10 miles a game. Yeah, I was running, I was running a lot, which was terrible because I was never in shape. I never passed the fitness test. <laughs> I don't know how they let me play. But no, that shit's crazy. Like, I feel like people don't realize the crossover between being an athlete and being a performer. Like, especially since there were always, at least like where I grew up and maybe you too, but like, like theater is like yuck you know like theater's like ugh, like that's stupid like that's like beneath kind of thing because like I grew up as like an athlete like a scholar athlete so like what the fuck are you doing like being like a theater kid but it's so I feel like there's such a crossover because we are performers like I loved I was I was in jazz band and band I played the drums and I fucking love that shit I love performing yeah um and it was more centered on you because there's only there's less people in like a jazz band or if you're playing in a band than it is like if you're playing on the field but still like it is fun to know that like eyes are on you even yeah. though especially in track versus like a team sport like soccer like it, it's all on you like if you yeah, win or lose like right. that's you like that's yeah. no one else you can't blame like you know the goalie or like <laughs> the forwards like it's you and like I think I really like that like that it's it's all up to you like you have to take accountability either way like Mm -hmm. like, you do it's a that's a lot um but I think it is cool like it like you said like you can't be like someone brushed me because like they fucking have it on camera if they brushed you you know (laughs) their wind got in my face cut me off (laughs) (laughs) yeah that, that makes total sense I feel like a lot of people got on tiktok for, because they could not perform in their like normal life <laughs> and so like gotta go gotta get these likes I love creating like I truly do it's so much fun to create for the gay community and like see something yeah. that really re- it's relates to people because it's also very affirming like if you make something and and it's something that truly happened to you and you make it in a creative way and people fucking dig it and it goes viral like, going viral is super fun, and, like, yeah, it's, like, an ego boost, but it's more of, like, oh, my God, so many people are relating to this content, which means, like, yeah. I'm not alone. Yeah, and then it, it's the same thing. It's, like, oh, I did that. That's cool. Like, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. an accomplishment. Like, <laughs> yeah, definitely. It, it really feeds my overachiever brain. It feeds my wanting attention. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to know if you're one of those kind of people that are, like, within the first – I feel like I know, like, five people – like whether they're teammates or like whatever that have been from Ohio. Yeah. And like every single one within the first like five minutes of meeting them, like, you know, that that's where they're from. Is that you? It's like, do you have a lot of Ohio pride, I guess? Um, I don't know. Did you know that I was from Ohio before you asked me? Like, were I you did. like, oh, that bitch is from Ohio. <laughs> I think it was in your bio. That's why I was like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, Cincy, yeah, it did say Cincy. It did say Cincy in the bio. It, it's almost like, hi, I'm from Ohio. And then they say their name. It's like this. I just don't know if you have that like vibe. I don't know. Like I have Ohio pride, I guess, because I grew up here and like my parents and my grandparents and my great grandparents, like everyone's from Cincinnati because no one leaves yeah. Ohio. Yeah. I think that's like a real, it's a real Cincy thing, but it's a real Ohio thing. Like nobody leaves, like everyone stays, which is kind of weird. I didn't really like it that much. I left and then I came back, but yeah. I don't know. I guess I have a little bit of Ohio pride. I love, I don't have much Ohio pride. I have more Cincinnati pride. Like I love the city. Like that's I awesome. live downtown. There's so much history and architecture in Cincinnati that you can't find anywhere else. Like my house is like a 1918. 1918 century house with just like cool fucking shit that I love so like I love the city in terms of it but like I grew up outside of the city and I'm kind of like eh about that 
but I don't know. Cincinnati's weird. Like, or Ohio's weird. Everyone talks differently depending on if you're, like, in the north or the south. And, like, there's weird shit. Cincinnati's right. weird. There's, like, east versus west. And, like, it's basically Catholic versus, like, Protestant. Yeah. What are um, your thoughts on um, Cleveland? Shithole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That's, uh, that's my, but everyone from Cleveland is like, Cleveland, you know, and I'm like, I'm terrible. They have the Cavs. That's it. Yeah. They have the Browns too. The Browns, I I will say I used to be like, well, the Browns fucking suck better, worse than the Bengals, but the Bengals are now sucking more than the Browns. Um, so I can't really say that anymore, but yeah, Cleveland's a shithole. I don't like it. It's colder up there because it's five hours away from where I'm at. Like Cincinnati is typically not as bad. But, yeah, I don't like that. But, yeah, Ohio is really weird. I don't know. Ohio is just a whole vibe. And it's, like, ten years behind the times. Like, it, yeah. and Mark, Mark Twain, like, quoted it, like, ten, like, like Ohio or Cincinnati, I forget which one, is, like, ten years behind the times. And it really is true. I feel like in terms of, like, being gay, like, in where I'm at now, like, being in the city, like, in the county that we're in is very progressive and liberal. Yeah. Um, but, like, where I grew up was – very conservative Republican. My whole family is Republican. So there's that. But it's not it's not too bad when you get into the city, but it's I don't know. It's yeah. it's interesting for sure. So you moved. I saw that you moved. You made a TikTok about it. Where did you move to? I thought you were in San Francisco. No, so I just moved. I live in San Diego and I moved apartments in San Diego. <laughs> oh nice okay. Okay, yeah. cool. I love like San Diego. Apartment. San Diego is yeah. one of my favorite fucking favorite places i've been there a couple times i think i'm gonna be going in in a month or two we'll see but have you um, been to um hillcrest it's like the gay neighborhood here no i haven't (laughs) oh my gosh you should come and then there's this bar called um gossip girl which is like this lesbian bar and i swear it's like like famous like nationwide because um my friend lives in boulder and she texts me, she's like, wait, have you been to Gossip Girl? I was like, yeah. And she's like, oh my God, like all the queers here are like, I need to like go to San Diego just to go to Gossip Girl. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's basically no. like Hillcrest has a bunch of gay bars, but like this one bar is like just for like the lesbians. <laughs> and it's like, it's a good time for sure. That's amazing. No, I need to go because I'm, vi- I'm looking to visit. There are a couple that I had met on TikTok and I just like vibed with them and they were like, you need to come to San Diego. And I was like, no, but like, if you tell, if you ask me, like, I will, like, I will come to yeah. San Diego. And they're like, but like, we're legitimately asking. I was like, okay, well, I'm legitimately saying yes. Like, I'm not just saying it'd be nice. Um, <laughs> so I texted him. I was like, yo, like, I'm looking at plane tickets. And they're like, yeah, like, we'll let you know with family stuff. And I was like, I'm coming. Like, yeah, I'm, like I'm fucking coming. So I'm gonna, I'll ask them about Hillcrest, because I want to yeah. go, I want Gossip Girl, like, who doesn't want yeah. XOXO Blake Lively to, uh, like, hey, I'm gay, you know? Such a vibe, and the bartender's so hot. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what kind of, like, like, uh, just so I can like, prepare. in San Diego, and everyone's, like, really tan and fit. I like that, <laughs> that's nice, okay. Okay, you know what, you sold me. Yeah. <laughs> you sold me on hot bartender okay <laughs> I'm, I'm booking a plane ticket now oh my god that's so funny but yeah that's cool you moved and you made a joke because you did you move in with your girlfriend that you met on tiktok is that what is that my correct on that exactly what happened yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we got a u-haul for the day just to like move the big furniture and i'm like we're literally u-haul lesbians like it happened <laughs> you made that video and i was like oh my god like they they did it they did it yeah it was so we met i feel like it was like day one i got a tiktok in april and i remember just like scrolling on my for you page and this girl pops up. I was like, wait, I know her. Like, she's the only other, like, gay runner. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Gay runner. I love how you do this, yeah. but, like, you are, air quotes aside, you are gay runners. <laughs> I was, like, I just, like, looking at her stuff. I was like, oh, like, she's funny. Like, and so I DM'd her. This is so embarrassing. I DM'd her on Instagram. And I was like, hey, because at the time, like, she had, like, 10K followers. And I was, like, just joining. I had, like, 200. And I was like, hey, like, teach me how to get, like, TikTok famous. And then she's like, okay, here's what you do. Like, you and your girlfriend make a really, like, cute video. Like, you know, like, and she's like, like this. And, like, sent me an example. I was like, oh, okay, like, here's the thing. Like, we broke up. Like, and then it was, like, from there. It was like, 
it just like took off. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like nuts. And like, you know, we, she, we like started out just like talking about the breakup or whatever. And then I was like, hey, I'm like going to like Park City, which she lives in Utah. And I was like, you know, to train for a month, like, mm -hmm. like let's hang out. And like, we ended up just like hitting it off. And like, you know, we've been together ever since. And then she goes to school. So she's in grad school in Temple, like in Philly. And basically like COVID, like everything shut down. And so like, she couldn't like classes all went online and then like her like she's she runs too so like the track team like you you can't like practice together so I was like why don't oh. you just like move to San Diego for like the rest of the semester and she's like yep <laughs> okay yeah just like drove across the country and it was so funny because we had dro I drove her out to Philly um so we drove like we made this big like road trip it was fun she got to Philly like I helped move her in and then like two weeks later she's like I'm coming to San Diego I was like what and she just like within like three days just like drove straight like from Philly to San Diego I was like holy that shit is nuts. like I cannot you drove across the country spent two weeks there and then drove back I was like this is only lesbians like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah completely Y'all take TikTok lesbians to a whole new level. I think it's fun, though, to be a stereotype some of the time, you know? Like, it's like, because it is true. Like, there are kernels of truth. I mean, like, not everyone fits into the category. Some people feel like they have to, like, fit into a box. But, like, it is kind of fun when you're like, oh, damn, that was me, though. Yeah, you're like, yikes. <laughs> you gotta laugh at yourself a little bit, like. Oh, yeah. Um, but, but, you know, they just move fast. And it's like, the first date is what, like, six hours? Like. Yeah, you've got to get to know it's like three dates, you know. So it's it makes sense why it moves so fast. It's like it seriously is three dates. Like I was explaining this to my dad. So I had a um, <laughs> my birthday <laughs> was like last week, and we went out to um, this like cool little restaurant that's been open since like before Ohio was a state. And Cincinnati is super cool. Like a bunch of presidents uh -huh. have been there, and I decided to nerd out. And I was like, I want to go to the Golden Lamb. Um, <laughs> And anyways, that doesn't make any sense in this conversation, but I put it in there because it's cool. Uh, <laughs> and my dad was like, so like, is it hard dating as a lesbian? Like, do you feel like there's, he's going to, I don't think he listen to mine anymore, but sorry, dad. But he's like, is, like I feel like they have a lot of baggage. <laughs> like, do you, is it like, do you think that like when you date someone, like, do you think they have a lot of baggage? And I'm sitting here like, bro, I got a lot of baggage. Yeah. What are you trying to say? <laughs> he did he asked me that and I was like dad I was like well like there is some shared trauma with like being gay and coming out and things like that which kind of binds you but also like you learn about someone and in, in like dates are six to eight hours he goes are you serious I was like yeah there's like three dates in one like you learn about everything you normally talk about your exes and you gotta kind of vet to see if how they're talking about their exes you know like are they over them are they just using it for context is it anecdotal or are they like fuck yeah. this bitch and you're like yikes you gotta read into that for sure yeah. yeah but when I saw you guys I didn't know like that she was a runner but like it does make sense now because like you had said that you previously had dated runners like do you just date gay runners like you're just like gay runner seeking other gay runners <laughs> So many headlines. It's just too fun. Like, I don't know. I have so many, like, options to go for for titles for this episode, but. <laughs> gay runner who only dates other gay runners. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good, I, no, you know, I, yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, in high school, like, I dated, I dated guys who were runners, and then I also did guys who weren't runners, so. Um, and then I guess with girls, I've only ever dated girls who are runners, but I feel like, cause it is such a, for me, it, it is such a lifestyle. Like it would be, mm -hmm. I think it would be hard for me to date someone who did, who wasn't like, not that you like can't be understanding, but like, I think just right away to like, know that this is my job and like, this is how much it like requires of me. It's just mm -hmm. like, saves like a lot of like explaining or like, uh, adjustments, like, um, like Emma gets it because she's like yeah like I'm a collegiate student athlete like um, I don't know did you date student athletes versus like NARPs or oh non-athletic regular people ah. yeah. <laughs> um, I did I dated athletes in in call I did it yeah the guys I dated were athletes you're right yeah. I there was some there were a couple that weren't but for the most part yeah and I think it's just because 
yeah, it, it is kind of a lifestyle, but it's not like when it's at that level, it's not a, I, I would assume professional is, it's completely different because it's like your actual job that you get paid for. You don't just like get your, like, you know, school paid for. But yeah, I mean, like you're more disciplined because you only have like a certain number of hours in the day. So like, I definitely get that. But it's funny because like when I, I came out right after college, all the all the women that I have dated have been non-athletic, like like to the point where they trip over their own two feet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Legitimately, um, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> but I I've I'm li- I've literally only dated people that are like, oh my god, like yay for you, like go on the side, like go do your thing, like I'm gonna fucking be over here. Um, so I don't know if it's one of those things where I'm like, I want to be the athletic one. And then, and then they're like, oh my God, good, good job. I've just dated like people who are like artists and like really creatives and stuff like that. Yeah. And so like they have that and I like, I like that stuff. I'm like, that's cool. I can't paint a picture. I'll yeah. go for a run though. Right. I mean, I'll, it's I'll move some shit for you. Cause I mean, it is hard cause like Emma and I do go for runs together, but like when you're on a run, I feel like sometimes that's when you can be like the most irritable. You're just like, fuck this. Like I'm just yeah. trying to get this done. And like, <laughs> Like, you could, like, very easily, like, get into, like, fights when you're, like, not that, like, we fight, but it's just, like, a very irritable time because you're, like, exercising and, like, you know, you're getting tired. You're just, like, oh, my gosh, like, just, like, maybe you say something and you're, like, okay, I didn't really mean to say that. Like, I was just running. Like, (laughs) (laughs) I didn't mean to say that. You're, like, I didn't mean to say that. You're being such a I'm just asshole. Really tired. Yeah. <laughs> Can we not talk about this right now? <laughs> yeah. Let's just catch our breath. <laughs> you want to talk about how your mom said something mean to you? Well, let's do it later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but then vice versa. Sometimes, like, you're on a run and it's, like, easier to, like, not with, like, Emma, but with, like, other people. Like, I feel like when I was on runs, like, that's when I would come out to people because it was, like, you know, it's just, like, I'm just gonna do it and like you know you're having a conversation it's sometimes easier when you're just like running and like looking at the ground instead of like over coffee you know like face to face like I'm gay like you know it's like yeah it's less intense when you're like oh we do this all the time and you're just like yeah I also just want to like you know so it can go both ways it could be like very irritable or like very like refreshing and like conversation just flows and like you would never be able to have that without like the exercise yeah, no, I get that. I feel like because when you're exercise, if you're running, like you're focused on running, like you don't really, it, it helps like reduce anxiety, you know, you're, you're focused on something. So you're not thinking about other things. So like, yeah. if you're doing something that is a hard thing to do, which is coming out, like, I understand how like running could be super easy to do that, because it's not disrupting any kind of pattern. You're like already talking to somebody, you're focusing on something, you're doing something shared together, you know? which it makes total sense. Like, you know, we all have different coming out things, but like the ones that have been so a little bit easier are like those kind of things um, versus like, you're like, I'm going to call this person up and they have no idea what's going to happen. And I'm just calling them specifically to tell them and I'm just coming out and then I'm just like, bye. (laughs) Yeah. Like my parents, like I remember when I, and I like specifically like forced myself to do it. And I was just like, hi guys, I'd like to talk to you about something. (laughs) Right. and then the tone gets different because they're like oh shit they're, yeah. you know she's pregnant or like she's this you know not quite you're like worse <laughs> it's gonna be worse no it wasn't too bad I didn't have a t- I didn't have it that bad of a coming out I don't think but uh I don't know like I remember when I came out to like my close friends I had just gotten back from like a six month like I was living in Thailand at the time and I came home and that's when I finally, like, I had told, like, my best friend who was gay, and it took me, like, forever, and I was super nervous. I don't know why, and I was, like, thousands of miles away, and I was, like, hey, I'm gay. Um, and she was, like, okay. <laughs> that's all she said. I was, like, all right. But then when I told my other friends, we had just gotten margaritas. Like, we hadn't seen each other in a while. We were all catching up, and we all had something that we were trying to tell each other. Like, all three of us had something that we were, like – had something weighing on us that we wanted to get out and we didn't realize it. And it was like two marks later, one of our friends left. Thank God. She's kind of homophobic. I'm glad I never had to do that. (laughs) Um, But we ended up like confiding in each other and not even realizing that we all three had something to bring to the table. So like I literally like 
came out and I was crying. And then my friend started crying because she had something she had to say. And then my other friend had something to say. And we all were just crying <laughs> about shit. It was beautiful. It was funny. That's that was my power. favorite. That's the power of vulnerability, like, right there. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it really is. And it, like, deepened all of our friendships. And because we shared yeah. an intimate moment of all three of us, that was something that was, like, really hard and, like, had some shame associated with it. I mean, I feel like I've had similar stories where it's, like, I tell someone, like, you know, this really personal thing. And then they're, like, then that allows them to, like, open up. They're, like, you know, like, my parents are going through a divorce and it's, like, really hard for me. Like, it's just, like, mm -hmm. and that conversation never would have happened had, like, you not been vulnerable in the first place. So, like, that's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. It's so pure. I love that story. <laughs> Thank you. I, th I love vulnerability because I know, I, I don't know if you've experienced this as an athlete, but, like, growing up was just, like, you know, like, you get your shit done if you, you know, you, you're not sick until you have, like, a fucking appendage missing from your body, you know, it's, it can be critical and, like, harsh at times, like, like, I don't know, and I also had some, like, pretty crazy coaches, like, I, I played softball in, like, first grade, and I had, like, literally, like, a coach, like, a dad coach get so mad, he, like, like, came up in my fucking face, like, I've had some crazy shit happen, and so I was, like, oh, feelings down, weakness, no, and I had to get out of it and it took me forever to like be emotionally available and like do all of those things so now that I'm like so open about it it feels so earned that when I see it in other people I and I am like that myself like it, it feels like I earned it yeah. I don't know no I feel that and it's also like when I see another people I'm like okay I really value you because mm -hmm. like I feel like you've had to go on through like you've gone through some shit to in order to be that like open and vulnerable and like yep. Yeah, I feel like I kind of have a similar story with like, so when I first came out, it was like, I went back home, it was like Christmas break, and there, I was at this like sleepover, there was like seven of us there, like, and we were, same thing, we were like making marks, drinking marks, and my friend goes, um, all right, raise your hand if you're a little bit gay. And it was like, <laughs> it was out of nowhere. And so she raises her hand and the, I swear like four of the seven of us like raise our hands. So we were like, what? And then like the rest of the night we were just like talking about like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe. So it was basically like one, and we had been friends. This was after sophomore year of college. So this was winter break or after the first semester of sophomore year of college. And we like were all friends in high school. I'm like, how did none of us like, come out to each other before this like this is nuts and it was just like so funny like and then one of the one girls that didn't raise her hand she's like as we like kept talking about it she's like well I mean I've had like dreams about girls and we're like dude like what? You're gay. like everyone's just gay <laughs> like, yeah and I think that's awesome because that person could have been like oh like I'm afraid that no one is so like yeah. I'm just not going to say anything and then you and then it kind of robbed you guys of having that great you know, vulnerable experience with each other. And you guys were better friends, I'm sure, because of it. Oh, and, yeah. like, even if that did happen, like, she was, like, raise your hand if you're gay, and, like, no one else was. Then, right. like, yeah, there's some embarrassment. There's some this. But, like, right. at least she fucking tried. Like, at least she oh, fucking God. tried, you know? And if <laughs> someone was being an asshole about it, litmus test. Get them out. They're not yeah. in your life anymore, you know? It just is a nice reflection of, like, oh, I don't like that. I'm not gonna have, I'm not gonna have her to my birthday party anymore. Yeah, totally, totally. I feel like um, I have to learn, like, those who mind just like don't matter and those yep. like who matter they don't mind and it's just like I just love that quote so much because it's like yeah okay I don't want that in my life like if you're gonna mind like you don't matter to me exactly I always forget those old adages like that you know those who mind don't matter that yeah. like it, when you think about like like just like when you're dating someone and and if someone that you realize like something that probably wouldn't have mattered to like your good friends or your family like matters to them like those little things right like, don't ignore that like hey, listeners you guys are listening to this like if you just think like someone you're just like oh no like we just aren't like you know we aren't vibing we aren't this but like it's because of this or it's because of this and it's like no like if it's something that they aren't don't like about you or something that like you did something maybe and you were wrong in it but it's like if your best friend would be like get could get over it and this person can't like and they mind and it and it bothers them then like it's not for you not. yeah <laughs> it's not for you yeah. so good advice i wish i would have known that at the time <laughs>
All right, guys, question with the queer segment where we pick a listener submitted question. Um, if you guys are wanting to submit a question, you can always DM me at Brie Logan and I can keep it anonymous for you and we can go from there. So we have our first person. We're going to call her College Gay. She's 21 and she writes, hi guys, I play college athletics and I know that I'm bisexual, but I'm afraid to come out while playing in college. I'm afraid that my teammates will treat me differently and that it will be a problem. I hate staying in the closet during a time in my life where I should be exploring, but I also don't want to face the real idea that I could be ostracized from my friends, especially when I have to show up every day to practice in games and I can't get away if things go bad. Right now with COVID, I'm not having to deal with this, but I know that when things go back to normal, this will be something that I have to deal with. What would you guys do and do you have any advice? Do you want to take this one? Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny is like half the people say what you say and then half the people like go straight into it. I mean, there's just like a lot to unpack there. I mean, did you come out in college or after? I, I didn't. I really wish for this question, college gay, that I did and that I could offer, offer you, okay. you know, that type of experience. But I will say I was in the same position as you. Like I knew that I wasn't straight. I didn't really know what it meant because it took me a while to, to get those repressed, the repressed emotions out. But I knew and I also was very, very scared of being outed by any reason. I tried my best to be as straight as I could be. I didn't even associate with anyone, not in like a mean way. I never said anything bad about anyone, but I like all of the gay people that were athletes, not just on my team, but just in general, I did not align myself with them because I was afraid if someone thought that I was because I was like friends with them, you know, it would, or if it would become more apparent, you know what I mean? Like I was afraid like my authentic self was going to leak out. Um, yeah, exactly. And so I didn't say anything because I was so afraid that it would cause a rift. I honestly, looking back, I think it probably wouldn't have been as big of a deal as I had made it up in my mind. I mean, I was giving myself worst case scenario, catastrophic, like right. that my head coach was going to try and get me off the team, right. that people were going to complain, that I, I made them uncomfortable, that I would be ostracized and that I wouldn't have any more friends. And like, as an athlete, your friends are the people on your team. So like, if, if you do that, then like, what else do you have? And then, you know, you have to be at practice and you have, you're obligated to do all of these things. I mean, right. I, I get how that could look like a literal hell, but I will say like, it's usually never the worst case scenario. And I don't know if you're in a private school, because there are some private colleges where they, they, they can, they can kick you out, unfortunately. Um, right. so, so that's a different situation where like, I would maybe be a little more careful with that in terms of like, if you're losing a scholarship and and if you would rather lose a scholarship and transfer and be happier, if you want to, you know, those are some really tough decisions financially that you would have to make. And that just kind of comes from within and what you're willing to endure and things like that. But if you're from a public school and you're afraid of people being uncomfortable and things like that, I understand that. I wasn't, when I first was thinking about it, I was not confident. I had a lot of internalized homophobia and I I do. There are parts of me that regret not coming out in college because that's the time that people explore. And that's the time where you're in with thousands of other people, just like you, that are figuring themselves out in college. Right. Honestly, I wish I had the courage to come out in college. I really did. I wish I had the confidence that I could have done that and I could have been a part of the LGBTQ plus community at my college. Like I really wish I could have gotten involved and, and really blossomed at that time but it just wasn't my time. I was supposed to do it now um, or else I wouldn't have had this podcast. So I don't know. I, it's really hard for me to tell you, but yeah, we have two people from like both sides, right? Like you're someone that didn't and wish mm -hmm. you had, and then I'm someone that did. And I'm like, I am so glad that I did. So I feel like for me, it was like, uh, I, like you're saying, like I had all, I had all those same fears, right? Like I was like, okay, they're not going to let me change in the locker room anymore. Like, they're not going to let me room with anyone when we, like, go on trips. Like, I just had these, all these, like, irrational fears that I was like, okay, like, this is why I had all these reasons why I'm like, I can't come out. And then I feel like for me, it was just, like, the part in, in her question where it was like, 
I feel like I should be like explore, exploring or like this should be the time. It's like, there's no should like, you know, come out when you're ready. Like, and if you're like you said, if you're not like, like you're not and that's okay. But like, I feel like all I can do is share my experience. But like for me, when I, I feel like I, a little part of me was ready and I was like, I'm just going to do it. And like I did. And I, I, it was honestly like such a relief and I feel like such a weight was lifted and like I had all those irrational fears were like that's all they were they were just so irrational like you know nothing changed in the locker room like no one was like oh my god like she's watching me and like if they were I was like please don't flatter yourself like (laughs) (laughs) like I don't know for me honestly and as an athlete too my performances like took off like I feel like as soon as I came out like I was a better athlete because it was like I wasn't hiding anymore I wasn't like when I was stepping on the line like the only thing that I was thinking about was like that race right then and there instead of like before in the back of my mind I was like I'm gay and like no one knows it and like you know like it was just Mm -hmm. like something I didn't have to like think about anymore and I feel like for me you know it was just so important to do that and I I feel like I I wish I had done it sooner I mean as far as like like you said like private universities and and that is like a huge fear my my girlfriend went to BYU you know like wow the Mormon yeah. school and she came out and um you know same thing she like she'll we'll talk about it together we're like bond about it it's like as soon as she came out like all her teammates were like okay like you know and she did it on a run and and she told her coach and her her coach's response was like that's cool like how was your tempo run like you know just yeah. like and I feel like she you know has done a lot of diversity inclusion work like for BYU and for like the Mormon church in general so like even even if it is like you were saying like a private university you can still have like a positive experience it's just I think it's just all about like if you're ready it also does kind of take a leap of faith so if you're ready to do that as well yeah there is a leap of faith in a in that uncomfortability that comes with having to do something and not knowing the reaction you know and like people always assume the worst and so I definitely at least my coming out experience, I assumed the worst and, and I got like a pretty decent, you know, people weren't really affected by it. Um, right. I'm not saying that that's everyone's opinion. You know, there are always going to be some people that just don't agree with it and, and things like that. And that's their own business. I will say if, if you do choose to do it and it, it might not go as well as you had planned, like you now realize those people don't deserve a place in your life. It's a litmus test. You know, if people are uncomfortable, they want to do whatever, like, that's not on you. That's on them. Like, their reaction to what you're saying is on them because it's a projection. And as much as it hurts, if, you know, you feel like, you know, you've been betrayed in in, in those kind of things, like, I swear to God, you'll be better for it. Like, I've had people that have had that in the past, just not even, not even with coming out and gay stuff. And, like, they show you your true colors, like, get out. Like, you're you're out of my life, you know? Yep, yep. Well, I hope we can help you out. And uh, listeners, if you're listening and you've gone through something similar, we hope we helped you out there. Nikki, you want to answer some questions really fast? We have a lightning round. I'm ready. Okay. Adidas or Nike? Sweat. <laughs> I know. You're, I was like, if you, she said Nike, like, she's like Adidas representative. Like, they're going to come after her. <laughs> I'll just lose my contract right, right here on this one. You're like, Nike, wait, wait, wait. Adidas, I swear. Doc Martens or Vans? Vans. Halloween or Christmas? Halloween, because I feel like my birthday's around there. I'm selfish, yeah. Hey, me too, me too. I get it. Flannels or Hawaiian shirts? <laughs> Hawaiian shirts. Giving presents or getting presents? Giving, giving. Uh, big spoon or little spoon? Little. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I ask these questions so many times, and, like, since I, like, watch people's, like, TikToks and preparation and stuff like that, and then I, like, am on with people, you can, like, you get a gauge a little bit. Okay, um, okay. what are you? Big spoon or little spoon? I'm a little spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Last song you listened to on repeat? Heart of Glass. Ooh, okay. I need to, I need to read. Yeah, it's good. That Let's do it on repeat. <laughs> okay, okay. Last one, favorite queer movie? This is so random. Have you seen Booksmart? Yes. Okay, I feel like they did a really good job with that queer character. I love, I love that. Olivia Wilde was, a, it was yeah. her first directing debut, and she did a fucking awesome job. Yeah. I love that. that That's definitely. one of my favorite movies. So yeah. Good. 
Okay, well, thank you so much for being on this podcast, Nikki. If you want to check out more about Nikki's content, uh, you can find her at Nikki underscore Hiltz on TikTok. And is it the same on Instagram? Um, I think there's no underscore on Instagram. Just Nikki Hiltz. Just Nikki Hiltz, yeah. No, thank you so much for having me. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad. Um, yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a rating on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe. Give us a follow on Spotify. That's it for this episode, my queers. Be you, be queer, stay safe. We will see you on the next episode.